Hello and welcome to the Side One YouTube channel. My name is Ray, and in this video, part 13 of My Robot Lab, we're going to look at the runtime service. So, the runtime service is not like any of the other really sexy services that gives you some sort of a an input or an output type, type device. Uh, this one is in fact a core of My Robot Lab, though. And while a lot of people are not aware of what it is and what it can do, it is the very first service that starts in my robot lab when you start it up. It's responsible for starting all of the services that are started after it and basically controlling the various threads that execute all of the other services. When you want to create and start a service from a Python, uh, bit of program. Runtime actually is the one that started Python and then when you execute the code to start a service from Python you're actually calling on Runtime to actually start that service up. Now one of the things that uh, has recently become available in the Runtime service is what we call configurations and configurations are really cool. We can actually set default configurations but we can also set configurations for each of our individual programs. Now there is an example in Python for runtime. So let's go to Python tab. We'll go to examples in service. We'll type runtime. This does come up a lot faster on a Windows machine. And you can see we've got a, an example bit of code here for runtime. And if we execute that, it's going to bring up a few things that are, can be very handy. So it's going to tell us, uh, well, let's execute for a start. It tells us how long this program has been running for. Uh, it tells us that, well, let's scroll down so we can get to this of it. It tells us which version of my robot lab we're running. So in this case, I'm running 1.1.1059. This one's called Typical Gort. So this is uh, the name of the instance. And at the moment, it's random. There is apparently a way you can actually set an ID. So it's the same ID each time. And once I've mastered that, I'll let you know. The program here is executing the type of computer so in this case, it's reporting a Raspberry Pi, which is what I am running it on. I'm running it on a Raspberry Pi 4. In fact, this is actually the Raspberry Pi 4 mounted inside my Spot Robot dog. It's also going to tell us how many processes are in here. There are four processes. We've got no gigabytes of free memory one gigabyte of total memory, which is a bit strange. I thought that one had eight gigabytes on that Raspberry Pi. We've got five services listed, are currently running. That's intro, Python, runtime security, web GUI. After it listed all the services, uh, it's printing off get host name and get the ID. It did actually, this program did actually start the Arduino service and Arduino serial. The Arduino service probably failed to start up properly because I don't know that the Arduino is connected properly at the moment. And it's not. And I haven't got a configured port for it either. All right, so with runtime, we can actually type that code to start the various services, as you saw in that little example program, or you can actually type in other commands. So I'm selecting the Raspberry Pi service and we'll start that and you'll see it appear over here. And in here, we can actually scan the ITC bus as well. And you can see I have got things connected to the I2C bus on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this is all well and cool, but there, the runtime service has a lot more power than that. 
but it's all in the background it's all in code and it's all to do with what we call the configurations so we have got a my configuration and we've got a spot configuration so let's go and have a look at the uh, the code in the background so if we go into folders so let's go into data so in my robot lab we've got the data folder it'll also create when you install my robot lab the resource folder python modules modules libraries and java input natives and the audio file but the data is what i'm interested in the moment this is where all user code ends up so if we go into data you'll see we've got my robot lab config security at spot now in this case spot is my program code and if you want a copy of that you can download it from my github um, if you look at any of my spot micro videos the link will be in those videos for that but we have this config folder if we go into config you'll see my config and spot and in this case i'm going to go into spot because it's a much bigger config file now when you start up my robot lab and specify config and i will show, demonstrate how that's done later the first thing that is run is a program called run or first config site is runtime.yml so if i right click on that and go to a text editor and bring it up you can see here that it's the runtime config auto start peers is true enable cli is true locale is in au so that's english for australia log level is null and then we have the registry now registry is important that is the list of services that will be started and it will actually read all of those from the config or from the config directory so runtime is the first one to be started and that is this runtime config then we have security uh web gui intro the raspberry pi back in this case I happen to know back is set up for all the PCA 9685, which is an I2C 16 channel servo driver. We've also got front, which is a secondary one that I'm not currently using. NPU 6050A is an inertial measurement unit. I've also got the PCF uh, 8574 for the LCD driver, plus the HD44780 service, which is the LCD driver. And then I've got 12 servos, tied by the eight clock service. And then the last one I run is Python. Now by default, Python is up higher if you save a config, but you can come in, you can edit and change the order of which services are started. There's no point trying to start the servo services unless you've got the uh, device that you're connecting the servos to running whether that be the Arduino or the PCA9685 and in the case of the PCA9685s there's no point starting those unless you've got the I2C service device or master running in this case the Raspberry Pi all right so now I've gone through those just close that one off and let's have a look at web GUI as an example it was one of the early ones being started up and you can see in here uh, the type is web GUI so it's the name of the service that will be starting uh, we've called it web GUI which makes it easy to identify auto start browser I've actually configured that for false now the standard for the web browser server or the web GUI service is to auto start the web browser when running on a Raspberry Pi I find that tends to use quite a number of resources that are very lacking on a Raspberry Pi so I tend to not turn that on and I'll access the my robot lab through another computer over the network something that's very easy to do with my robot lab auto start peers is true uh, enable MDMS is currently false now 
I was told what that is, but I've got a memory like a sieve. And what port the, the web interface will be on. So 8888. So let's close that one down. We'll have a look at the Raspberry Pi service. There's not much in there from memory. So all the SPs and the type Raspberry Pi, there are no other configurations we need to worry about. So there's nothing to change there. I want back because that's an important one to me. So this is the Adafruit 16 channel servo driver. That's the service name. The device bus is, is one. It's using the controller Raspberry Pi for accessing that that I2C bus and the device address is 40 which is correct if I look at front it'll be address 41 all the other info will be very similar so front and you can see address 41 so this is where what uh, the runtime service gets all of its power is the ability to select big order and the configuration of each of the services. Now, one that's really interesting is Python. If we have a look at that configuration. In this one, we have got, it's obviously the, the Python config, the service type is Python, but on startup, it will run, it will execute this program. So it's data spot start dot pi which is one of the files I've got in that spot folder, in the data folder. And I can actually create a script called shutdown and point that stop script to point at that shutdown. And that will execute that program code when the shutdown command is executed. So in the case of spot, I can actually tell it to lower the robot down to a resting position prior to shutting down so it doesn't fall down and we'll just have a look at a, a sample servo so we have a, a servo service uh, auto disable is false because I didn't want it shutting the servo down while it was standing there auto start piece is true Clip, I'm not sure what that one does. Controller, it's looking at the back PCA9685. It's enabled in here. Idle timeout is 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds, but that's disabled with the auto disable being turned off. Uh, inverted true, so this one is actually inverting the operation of the servo. We've got our minimum, oh sorry, maximum in and max out, min in and min out. So in this case, we're using 180 to 50 as our input range and the servo output range is uh, 173 to 31. That's to try and get the right angles on the legs based on what I'm trying to program. We're using pin six on our controller, which is back. The rest position is 50. So whenever we send a rest command to the servo, that's where it's gonna go. We've actually got a speed configuration setting in there. Uh, sweep max, sweep min, synced are all disabled at this stage. So what I can do uh, is Reduce the speed of this if I need to, so that the servo will attempt to run slower. And the way my robot lap servos control the speed is by sending a series of steps, positions that it calculates for it to go to. Okay, so that's all of the spot config. And we can see we've got the spot config here. I can actually load the spot, the spot config so we can start that. And you can see it's loading in all these extra services.
and eventually it should start executing the Python code. Let's see if it did. No, it didn't because it was already running. So I'm going to shut this down. So once this goes red, we're shut down enough. I can close the web browser. Now, this is my terminal window where I've been launching my robot lab. So the last method I used was my robot lab dot sh. Uh, in a Windows machine, you would run my robot lab dot bat. I'm going to use the C switch and tell it spot. That'll tell it to actually load the spot config from start. Uh, in Windows, you can add, it's myrobotlab.bat space minus C space and the name of your config. So we'll execute that. So the difference here is my robot lab will start all the way up, but it will not launch the web browser. So at this point in time, it's finished executing the script over here. So I'm going to launch a web browser on another computer. And you can see it's actually pulled information down for that. If I bring that up to where you can see that web browser and you can see all of the uh, My Robot Lab standard information there. If I go to Python, this time round, you'll actually see the start script that it executed. And that's pretty cool. So you'll see we've well, got Raspberry Pi service. Runtime is currently running spot. The MPU 6050 is currently running. If I give the robot a bit of a jolt, you can see that move. That one, the web GUI interface isn't that brilliant, but this one here, you can see I'm sending out to the LCD display the current time. We've got a clock down here, which is causing that update on the LCD. And we've got all of our servos and their various positions where they started up. So that's a, a brief explanation of the runtime service and how you can use it to start your own robot configuration. Uh, it is a very powerful service and I've barely touched on some of the things we can do with it. Under the runtime, uh, well in Python you saw some of the features that we can use, but that'll do for this video. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. As a form of support, it helps the channel a great deal, but costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon account. And you can join my patrons, Go Lucky, El Morales 45, as well as my new patron, White Wolf. I also have a Discord channel, and you'll find links to the Discord channel and the Patreon in the description below. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment with the video or come and visit me in the Discord and ask a question there. If I can't answer it, someone else in there might be able to. And we'll see you in the next video.